Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be, and welcome to a post about, it's about the manipulative nature of certain spaces on the internet and trying to figure out what it is that some of them are really trying to do. It's called Less Wrong, A Space for Rationality. Today, I watched a woman train her dog by restricting his access to his favorite toy. She threw the toy into the water and let him jump in to get it. When he came back, she took the toy away and set it on the ground. When the dog tried to pick up the toy, she scolded him. She had full control over that dog because she had control over his favorite toy. Some dogs, I've heard, are made unhappy if you just give them too many toys and not enough control. My guess is that many internet platforms exercise a similar level of control over their human users, even the communities that purport to encourage thoughtful debate. Online arguments are sort of like video games for people who like to play with words, and if there are a bunch of people that you don't want to disrupt the trances of everyone else's work-game balance, you need to corral those sorts of disruptive people in a place where they might play with one another. You can corral young people in a university and filter out those who like to play with words, those who like to play with numbers, and those who like to figure out how to say the same thing in 20 different ways, each less intelligible than the last. This form of conditioning will ensure that these people will respond in predictable ways when their favorite toys are presented to them. Edward Witten is a master of describing the same basic physics in 20 different ways. And this profile I have linked to here in Quanta says pretty much this, what I, pretty much that. If you are able to read between the lines and decode the academic jargon. Here's my hint for your decryption key. Dualities in physics means the languages are saying the same thing. So if you read that article with that um, decryption method, new meanings may appear to you. So the article was about Ed Witten, a physics professor at Princeton, who has the cult leader, um, he has kind of a cult leader feel. <laughs> And when he encourages students to study Wheeler, I, after having spent a lot of time in the physics community, am painfully aware that this is akin to telling a kid who wants access to Frodo's ring of ultimate power to go jump in a lake or go jump in a volcano of insanity. As life sends students who've been indoctrinated by people like Professor Witten into the workforce, they may find themselves surrounded by people who don't like to play their favorite games. Instead of learning some new games with real people in their community, they often search for playmates on the internet. I sometimes have a hard time finding people to play with because well, and I've told, been told that it might be because my thoughts come across as too intense. I use a quiet voice, and I'm not in your face, tricky or impolite, but what I think about tends to require a little bit of mental stretching to understand, and I get the sense that most people would rather talk about the weather. I can respect that. In fact, I have never enjoyed doing the splits. It hurts. Based on the reaction people have to what I write on the internet, I see that it isn't everyone's cup of tea. 
In terms of unnecessary jargon, what I write must provoke an inflammatory reaction in a mimetic immune system that is sparked by too much cognitive dissonance. When I'm in a bad mood, instead of concluding that I am terrible at explaining things, I conclude that many of the people who react badly to me are either not that smart or they are too distracted to be smart. The truth is that they may not see the value in it. I mean, why do, this, do the splits? It hurts. Why rock the boat? Why explain the details of what is rocking the boat? Perhaps the rocking of the boat has to achieve a larger amplitude before people get confused and go out in search of intelligent explanations rather than the pablum fed to them by the news media. Maybe that's already happened, and that's the reason why groups like QAnon have become so popular. In my search for intelligent life on the internet, I came across a site called Less Wrong. It marketed itself as a space for rational debate with high standards. But when it comes to the internet, I've learned that many brands are quite ironic, so I wasn't sure what to expect. At first glance, all I could see was that they were proponents of the use of exclusionary language, jargon. They would write lengthy, lengthy articles that could be easily decoded if you had a good vocabulary and imagination. For those without such tools, the exclusive style gave arguments which were quite simple, the air of complexity, rationality, and authority. I started to feel confused when I realized that some of the articles appeared to be downright satirical, as in one entitled Anthropomorphizing Humans. I complimented the satire and was downvoted and asked why it was satirical. I thought, oh my, either they are pretending to not understand that this is a satire or they really don't understand how to think rationally. How strange. If so, this would be a hard audience to win over because they will give the appearance of being able to think while having no self-awareness of about their limited perspective. I was kind of confused. I then read another article and was confronted by yet more satire. He wrote, Today I'd like to pose the following conundrum. When you pick up a cup of water, is it your hand that picks it up? Most people, of course, go with the naive positive answer, yes. Recently, however, scientists have made a stunning discovery. It is not your hand that holds the cup, it is actually your fingers, thumb and palm. Yes, I know, I was shocked too. But it seems that after scientists measured the forces exerted on the cup by each of your fingers, your thumb and your palm, they found that there was no force left over. So the force exerted by your hand must be zero. Silly. He then goes on to explain at length that in most people, a hand and fingers are inextricably tied together since they map to the same physical space, like two different coordinate systems. It honestly never occurred to me that this wasn't honest, obvious to all people. I kept reading and finding more articles like that and couldn't figure out if these people were for real or if they were brilliant satirists or if they were cynical psychopaths who enjoyed making fun of people who couldn't think. That's kind of mean. I mean, the one of the people who founded it had written an entire 10 book set, which was a scientific fanfic of Harry Potter. Like he'd rewritten the whole series, but with the twist that Harry Potter was trying to teach witches about the scientific method in science absolutely fascinating that this man's training made that a soothing activity to do. It was kind of like he was trying to reinforce some worldview that he struggled with, or I'm not sure, defend himself, defend his worldview by writing in that way. I'm, I was confused, but I am not I am impressed with the community and their, um, they have a lot of background in artificial intelligence and I have a lot of interest in 
how to use artificial intelligence to diagnose plagiarism because nowadays they can take books like Harry Potter and use an AI to rewrite them in another style like the style of Charles Dickens or Jane Austen or just about anybody and I would really like to if there's anyone there who would collaborate with me on using those tools to analyze some specific works of fiction that I believe can be used to diagnose plagiarism, that you could, I, I would really be interested in that. And I, I have some ideas about how such an algorithm would be structured. So if anyone from Less Wrong is watching, um, I'm thinking about you. Nevertheless, I got off on the wrong foot with this community and because I was trying to test what what their um, belief system was, I posted a few articles that I thought would spark some interest in how the scientific method is being misapplied within the physics community. But it attracted a lot, they attracted a lot of detractors and no champions. So it was kind of like they hated what I had written. At least most people, maybe some people liked it. So these articles were immediately downvoted into oblivion and I was quite surprised since these articles had been quite popular elsewhere. I thought that they were good examples of rational thinking. There was an attacker who argued at length that Directly adding together uncorrelated phase errors from unsynchronized measurement devices is a valid way to reduce the timing error of your measurement. Was he confusing space and time? He argued that organizing randomly scrambled timing data according to a criteria called weirdness or deviations from expectations was valid. That doesn't make sense either. I mean, if you take a picture and you reorganize all of the pixels, you oh, and with completely in a completely random way you can't reorder them unless you already know the picture that you want to get it just seems like cause effect he also argued that there is no such thing as a noise floor when you can take more timing data now i mean i understand i mean if I didn't know better, I would think that this guy was acting like a caricature of irrationality and executing a form of psychological warfare on me designed to discourage people like me from criticizing certain sacred cows of the scientific community. It was very, it's a very strange reaction. At first I thought, People can't really be this stupid. I can't believe that the internet has allowed for the formation of a community of so many people with this level of obtuseness. They give a perfect impression of academic competence, yet they can't seem to understand simple things. Is this what Nassim Taleb was thinking about when he wrote of the epidemic of people who were intellectual yet idiot? What is funny is that while I'm sure that a spider web of psychological warfare that disconnects people from their rationality can effectively drain the life force from young men who want to belong to a group, women in science have often spent decades within a black sheep role and a lot of them will be immune to this sort of pressure because if you've never been invited into the group, the pressure to conform will have no effect on you and criticism will just roll off of your back like water off of a duck. I'm sure I'm not important enough to warrant such attention. In fact, my whole physics career seemed designed to teach me how unimportant I am. That's part of their indoctrination procedure. But there are PR firms that pay people to orchestrate such attacks to discourage certain types of people from spreading their thoughts on the internet. This can even be automated. And I feel sorry for the people hired to carry out these sorts of pointless jobs. Perhaps one of them was infiltrating less wrong. Then again, these are the sorts of people who professionally destroy innocent people's reputations with accusations of all manner of perversions, bestiality, pedophilia. And these dark PR firms located mostly in London and New York are sort of like 1984 personified. 
And for some reason, the people they hire never developed a sense of shame. I mean, I know people come in all sorts of varieties, but when you concentrate them in teams, ugh, it gets kind of gross. Although I do not imagine that there are teams of people who scheme to mentally destroy specific people on the internet. I do imagine that many internet communities are managed by groups that set in place rules designed to squelch certain ideas. You know, you want to nip that QAnon business in the bud. After being banned from every forum in which I posted on Reddit, this experience on Less Wrong was a slight improvement because they simply refused to distribute what I'd written to their community rather than outright banning me from posting at the beginning. But after five posts and everybody downvoting me, they told me to go away for a few months. So, I mean, they have to, sometimes disruptive information has to be, has to sink in a bit. Um, so I'm not entirely giving up on the community because I do think that they probably carry some valuable knowledge that I really am interested in, especially with regard to um, plagiarism detection, because I think I have some good examples and of test cases and some ways to, some ideas about how to structure in such an algorithm. I imagine that people who have a high security clearance must have issues with not being able to find a place to chat about the things that concern them because they know too much. So they just can't write down all of the horrible things they've seen and expunge their feelings of horror or shame in the traditional confessional ways that the rest of us have available to us. Perhaps they are encouraged to write their thoughts and send them into a censorship apparatus which tosses them into a memory hole never to be seen again. Perhaps that's why people decide to write their feelings in the form of fan fiction or yeah, anything like that. Um, perhaps these sorts of security workers are given the illusion that their words will someday work their healing magic, but now is not the right time for them to be released into the public consciousness. I wonder if some of their stories are turned into the plot lines of children's cartoons so that when the ideas emerge into the light of day, people will not find them so shocking or frightening. Um, for example, Teen Titans Go, my kid, one of my kids watches that, and it has some weird plot lines. So I just imagined, wouldn't it be interesting if kids like her watch this and then when she gets older, some something really shocking comes out about the history of some country. She's, she just looks at it and says, eh, I, I saw that on Teen Titans Go. It's not that weird. At least that's what her inner child would feel. Um, but about less wrong, when I asked the moderator what I did to provoke such a negative reaction, he wrote that because my articles were related to current scientific experiments, they didn't fit the more general applications of philosophy of science to which they typically constrain themselves. So you can sort of compartmentalize people into working on abstract concepts so that their work does not become politicized. Perhaps they have to play by those rules in order to exist. Um, But nevertheless, this moderator also proceeded to defend a person who had argued that organizing randomly scrambled data according to a criterion called weirdness is a valid scientific method. Now, if these people are calling themselves computer scientists, I think they need a regrounding in the scientific method. <laughs> when I objected to his assessment, he insisted that I didn't understand the meaning of the word randomness. 
If you think about that for a minute, that's rather condemning of that moderator. He also accused me of playing the bias card with everyone I had engaged. And I really hadn't done that at all. I had only once suggested that a person who was doing image analysis as his profession would naturally be upset by my claims about the validity of his methods involving this weirdness criterion, but I didn't think it was scientific. I mean, you can just imagine if somebody's job is to do image analysis and then they want their algorithm to identify faces. And so they give it a face template and then the code finds a face and that's okay, but if that code wants to find a specific face, that's where you get off track. Because if you tell your code, I want you to find this person's face, and the code finds it, I don't think you can trust that anymore. It's, there's a big difference. And I think that's what I was trying to explain by using these scientific experiments as examples. A site is only as good as its moderators, and this makes me think that maybe I should hang out a flag for people who want to have a space for rational debate, but I haven't given up on less wrong yet. So at this point, I'll just say that if you want to have any rational chats about science, philosophy, culture, or whatever, I welcome you to use my comment section as a forum to submit guest posts or submit guest posts. I am not the best at engaging everybody who wants to talk since I'm not particularly chatty, but I will try to do better than that moderator did. At a minimum, I won't defend indefensible reasoning and I think that if that moderator knew he was defending nonsense, he was gaslighting me, and that is something that psychopaths do. If less wrong is funded by some group to corral and demotivate independent thinkers through various forms of confusing psychological, you know, it's kind of like warfare. You know, you tell somebody that up is down and down is up. I think it should be defunded because that's just evil and counterproductive in the long run as it prevents the natural corrective processes from taking place, leading to stickiness in the system that sometimes snaps in jarring ways. I think it is a lot better to have a bunch of static electricity than a gigantic lightning bolt. In terms of, say, a, simulations of, a simulation of Maxwell's demon, where you're trying to sort particles according to their political views, and then you know, you have a sort of intelligent apparatus. It's this door between these two tanks of gas, and it opens every time somebody with a certain political viewpoint hits it, so that you end up with all the reds on one side and all the blues on the other. But that's only, those bubbles don't last forever. Then the bubble pops, and those two clouds of gas mix, and you end up with conflict. And so it's not a good idea to try to manage the internet in that way. I think everybody knows that now. And there's also the question of what to do with people who are really upset. So uh, the sloppy method is just to corral them in, loca in single locations. Just, oh, this person's upset. Let's just go put him in the jail over here um, until he cools off. But the problem is when you do that to these sorts of people, they don't cool off. They just get hotter. You've concentrated them. And if this is a thermodynamic system, the best way to deal with those people is to send them to a location where everybody is super cool. And they, that, that cools them off. They absorb their negative energy. Um, in any case, on the internet, when it comes to these algorithms and when it comes to the sorts of people who are managing them, you never know when you are dealing with a naive autist or a wolf in sheep's clothing. And I honestly couldn't figure out the makeup of the less wrong community. The level of self-awareness there seemed to be highly variable. Um, but I will repeat myself once again, I really am seriously interested 
in working with somebody on um, AI plagiarism identification software, and I, I want to write about it, I want to test it. Um, yes, so that's my goal. Thank you for watching. I hope you tune into my other videos. They're on a lot of science topics and just lots of things, anything I find interesting. Until next time.